And let's bring in House Judiciary Committee and Freedom Caucus member, Congressman Ron DeSantis. Congressman, are you gonna, is it possible that you'll get something done on health care reform before you guys and gals take off for the holiday? Well, I don't know about before the holiday, although I would say we should cancel the holiday if we're, we're close to something and let's actually get it done. Um, but I think what's happening is really what should have happened from the beginning is there's a real concerted effort to get a bill that reflects the consensus of our conference. And before the bill had been done, written and then said take it or leave it and then that left a lot of members of the conference not just conservatives uh, feeling like the bill wasn't doing what what we needed it to do so i think there's definitely a great effort underway to get there and i'm actually optimistic because i think that uh, folks both in the republican conference and in the white house understand that the cur the former bill didn't do enough to drive down health insurance premiums which is the main reason people dislike obamacare so if we can address that in a way that'll be meaningful and that people will be able to see it and that potentially can be a home run for us here in the Congress. What are the other sticking points? In terms of, like, what do you need to see just as an individual, a member of the Freedom Caucus, in order to get on board with whatever comes out of the House? Well, I think Senator Paul hit the, hit the nail on the head about the individual health insurance market. Obamacare has wrecked that. Premiums are going up. You have healthy people fleeing the market. You're kind of in a slow motion death spiral. The former bill that didn't have enough support really didn't address that in a meaningful way and in some ways may have made it worse. Um, so I think if we're addressing that issue and moving in the direction of an actual market so that we can see premiums go down, to me, that's the sweet spot. Um, now, there's other members in the conference who are opposed to the bill who have other problems on Medicaid or on some of these other ways. So they're going to have to, we're going to have to accommodate that. But I think the individual insurance market, making sure that people can go and actually find an affordable policy and have multiple carriers offering one, if we get there, then we've, we've uh, answered the call to repeal and replace Real Obamacare. Real quick, put some odds that all you Republicans will get on board with one plan and actually pass something and send it to the Senate in, say, the next month. I think the odds are better, better than even. Um, and I think, it's, I think the next month is probably the good timeline because the Senate had told us even if we had passed the bill on, on our previous artificial deadline in March, they weren't going to take it up till May anyway. Right. So uh, rather than try to ram it through before the recess, either cancel the recess, come back, or just, just make sure this is a consensus product. And I think if we do that, I think we have a very good chance to advance a, a, a true repeal and replace bill from the House. And turning to a controversy, a developing scandal down in Washington, we have sources telling Fox News that former National Security Advisor to President Obama, Susan Rice, is the very person who unmasked the names of Trump transition officials caught up in surveillance. In this statement to CNN, a source close to Susan Rice said the following, the idea that Ambassador Rice improperly sought the identities of Americans is false. There's nothing unusual about making these requests when serving as a national a senior national security official, whether Democrat or Republican. I just want to point out, she essentially denied on PBS roughly 10 days ago, uh, less than two weeks, that she knew anything about the, um, what Devin Nunes, the head of um, your committee, was talking about. Now, in this statement, there's no denial. Your thoughts, and what are you guys going to do about this on the House Intelligence Committee? Well, you're exactly right. Ten days ago, she said, I've never heard of such a thing. I wasn't involved. Now that statement basically admits she did unmask. Uh, they're saying that it was proper for her to do it. And it is the case that a national security advisor does have authority to do it. The question is, is why did she unmask these names? And then what was that information used for? And it just so happens that in this same time period, you had a rash of leaks of just this type of information that was grist for the mill of all kind of media stories attacking the Trump administration and the Trump transition. And so the question is, is, is that unmasking uh, linked to the different intelligence leaks that we've seen? Mm -hmm. And if it is, then that's clearly an improper use of that authority, and it's an abuse of power. Congressman, are you going to call her to testify in front of the, uh, the committee? 
I think we should have her before the Intelligence Committee, um, absolutely. And I think both in the House and Senate, uh, we should do that. She needs to get on the record and uh, tell the American people what she did. And I think we also need to get to the bottom of who else had access to this information. I mean, mm -hmm. Ben Rhodes is a big Obama loyalist, Deputy National Security Advisor. So when you mm -hmm. start seeing people like Susan Rice and Ben Rhodes, you know, that is, that's Obama loyalists. That's who they, those folks are. And I think they would have more of an incentive than some of these career uh, bureaucrats. To, to do things that could damage the Trump administration. You've got to prove that case, and we've got to get the facts, but I think that there's some really troubling circumstantial evidence so far that we've seen. Troubling Congressman, let, let's turn for a second to, to taxes. What is your line in the sand? What has to happen on a tax overhaul to get you on board? That's one question. Relatedly, uh, can, can, would you be on board with a, a tax overhaul that expanded the deficit, that, that brought in less government revenue than is being brought in right now? Well, um, expanding the deficit only happens if you continue to spend. And so if you may bring in less revenue, there's nothing preventing us from paring back spending. I mean, I'd obviously be supportive of that. But I think the, the biggest issue that I see right now with this is the border adjustment tax. It's splitting the Republicans in half. Mm -hmm. And I'm very supportive of lowering the business rates. I'm supportive of lowering the individual rates, broadening the base. And I think those are consensus things. But I think when you do the border adjustment, it creates problems because it's effectively going to raise taxes mm -hmm. on uh, low, low and middle income folks in terms of the things that they buy. Um, and I don't know that that's a, a winner for us economically. So, so where or are you going to get the trillion dollars that it gets you? That's a trillion dollar uh, pipeline right there. What, what do you do without it? Well, I think you should uh, obviously examine ways where, where you can do that. And if you're going to use reconciliation, you're going to need to do that mm -hmm. either on the tax or the spending side. Um, you can broaden the base. There, there's different things that you, that you may be able to do. But I just, I just, I'm, I'm just warning that the border adjustment has is, is really split us in half. And I think it makes tax reform more difficult. So I think we should be investigating other ways to get there. And if we can do that, then I think we really have a clear path here in the House side, at least. Mm -hmm. Congressman, you covered a lot of ground for us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Congressman Ron DeSantis. Thanks. Take care.